Alright, so because this was an eBay buy, um, I have checked the ground by the way. I checked the ground on both the Micro and the 2027 and the 2032. Uh, Checked it to the ground of my mains, off the ground of all the tips, and it seems to be grounded. But still, it's an eBay buy, and it seems fairly cheap for the condition it came in. Practically brand new. I don't see any scratches. I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't know what this was being sold for or why it was being sold so cheap. But, you know, when, when you get something that's slightly too good to be true, then you have to double check it. So, we're going to double check it. There we go. So I believe this whole thing pretty much strips down with four screws. There's a whole entire teardown on it in the manual. If you get the updated manual, that actually gives you what features 4, 5, and 6 do in the newer firmware. It will give you complete breakdown of it because these are meant for manufacturing environments and because they're meant for manufacturing environments they're also meant to replace parts on them as well as they break which means it's completely user friendly user serviceable and easy to get parts for there's a lot of parts available for it almost from any HACO retailer or authorized reseller. Is there actually still one more screw? Do I need to pull that last screw? Or is that just a uh, decoration? Nope, it looks like that needs to come out too. Now as far as the actual writing, It doesn't have the writing of a, a fake Heiko. I've seen one of the fake 951 Heikos. One of the first obvious things is the font right up front here. The 951 runs into the ESD safe and the font is just, it doesn't look anything like this at all. So let's go ahead and carefully open this up. We do not want to ruin our new toy. On the inside, it's made of PBT CGF plus MDX. So you know what? We're going to have to ask AVE someday what the heck all those things are. Because I don't have a clue. There you go, AVE. What, 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 what material is this? Because, yeah, me, no clue. So, we have uh, most definitely proper grounding through this whole entire thing. Grounded out to the third pin. Single pole switch. Looks like an authentic Heiko transformer. Actually does have part number FP101B, ROHS compliant, made by PNE. Really good solder welds here off off the secondary of the transformer really good thick wires coming in off the primary fuse block in the back and i would say this is an authentic echo without a doubt Everything seems to match up from what I've seen. We got the uh, C4549, got a two watt resistor here. Looks like a huge bridge rectifier here. It is. Everything looks perfect on this. Uh, this part number, what do we got down here? Um, J534, this is this guy down here. I mean, he's not exactly standing straight up, but he's standing. I wouldn't worry about it. Push down an angle for a reason, probably. But this, this here is the wire that goes to the sleep. This is the ground to the PCB. Uh, this is the power of the secondary of the transformer. Comes right in where power is expected to go to, right where it's actually bridge rectified. Yeah, wow. 
this is an authentic Heiko. What do you know? All the screws seem to be fairly tight. Let's double check them. Just make sure. Nothing loose. It was good assembly. Really clean job. The resistors are really nice and clean. Very nice clean soldering. Really impressive. One adjustable little pot there, which is actually sealed up. Nichicon caps. We got a 50 volt cap here. That's 200 microfarads. And we got a 50 volt 100 microfarad cap here. And we even have our socket here for our programming pins. And it even tells you which one is your ground. So there's four programming pins. One, two, three, four in the ground. Everything looks good. So yeah, I, I really like the fact that this is completely and fully serviceable by myself. If anything breaks, I can buy the parts and just keep on running this. Hopefully Heiko will keep this model in production for a while. At least that's my hopes. As far as how to get this board back in properly on this side, I seem to be having a problem lining it back up over here. That lines up there. And you see, I got some tight wires here. These wires tuck in here. I should have washed this a bit closer. I know this ground goes here. I know this wire tucks down here. Has to be a slot over here somewhere. There it is. There we go. So that does go right on the other side of that bridge rectifier there. That actually runs on the downside AC input behind the actual remote wire. Absolutely gorgeous. The reason this is pointed down probably is just to keep it away from the heat of the transformer a little bit more, most likely and still give a clearance to the screw right here. There's even a proper cutout there for the bridge rectifier where it's cut out, which is really nice. Not too bad. There we go, we take a closer look. So yeah, really good deal. Really happy with this buy. Couldn't have done better. Absolutely shocked and amazed. And very happy at the same time. Let's not forget about that happy part. But while I have this apart, I think I'm going to go upstairs into my lab and I'm going to grab some uh, some heat shrink because I'm going to heat wrap that optical sensor so I don't have to worry about this card anymore.